moved to Vancouver at the end of the summer and started renting space in a communal wood shop. I quickly heard that our building hosts a massive art show in the middle of November. I thought this would be a great deadline for me to finish a carving as well as get settled into my new spot in a new city. I carved this small face while camping this summer and wanted to make a large scale copy while modifying some of the features. This video documents the process of carving for my very first art show. I started by copying various ratios of the face that I liked and changing some of the ones I didn't. A rough sketch was all that was needed to get started on the bigger piece because the small carving could be consulted later on in the process. I smoothed the surface with an electric hand plane so I could copy the rough sketch I made onto the larger piece. A new friend of mine in the city gifted me a few pieces of this beautiful Port Orford cedar tree that came down in a windstorm along the coast. Since this species of tree is endangered, I was very lucky to get a piece of one that fell naturally. This has to be the most amazingly aromatic wood I've ever worked with. I always start off a little timid with how much material I remove at the beginning. This typically leads to a longer, more tedious process of adding detail and arriving at the final product. As I build confidence in my abilities, this step should leave me with only light chisel work to clean and detail the piece. Instead, I was left with a wealth of material to be removed. Mountain Fire Woodworks. Sorry? Mountain Fire Woodworks. Oh, you got the garb too. Yeah. <laughs> there are 15 different craftsmen and women renting space in this shop, all of which have been an absolute pleasure to meet and learn from. The sense of community has really helped with my transition into a new city. I didn't mind the extra chisel work on this project as I find the process very meditative. With the major face details taking shape, I knew it was time to work on the eyes. A step I was nervous to take as I knew it would be the first part of the carving people would be looking at, as well as the most difficult. I got my detail chisels as sharp as possible and they glided through the cedar. I would like to take this moment and say a quick thank you for checking out this video. And if you're enjoying it, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really goes a long way in helping me create more videos like this one. I brought the carving back outside to remove excess wood around the face, rough in the beard, and recess the frame. With the face looking rather flat, I used the saw to sharpen the angle the face was receding at as well.
Before adding the final details, I wanted the frame and sanding work to be completed. No real reason, just felt right. Getting the pupils to a point where I was satisfied was a difficult task. One would always seem slightly larger than the other, possibly cross-eyed. Lots of iterations in the placement and the depth. With the eyes and details completed, it was time to add a coat of clear finish. I used an outdoor water-based varathane, as it would not alter the color but it would add a slight sheen to the surface. I also didn't know where this piece would be after the show, so preparing it for the outdoors became a priority. I had a little extra time before the show and I decided to build a design I had created a few months ago. A bedside lamp loosely based on medieval hanging street lanterns. The base and top were made using black walnut and the pillars were thinly cut pieces of oak. The day I had been working towards had finally arrived. The show ran from Thursday to Sunday evening. The building I'm situated in is home to over a hundred studios, each filled with a different style of creativity. Thousands of people came through each day to see the diverse collection of paintings, sculptures, furniture, and a collection of other things to feast their eyes on. I couldn't help but think about just how crazy it was that I was in an art show, something my family, friends, or myself never expected. By the end of the weekend, I sold some of my smaller wares, which paid off for my fees for the show. However, the lamp and carving were both coming home with me. I was excited to spend some quality time with my carving. I received a message from the owner of a wood art gallery in town a week after the show had finished, and she was interested in displaying the carving. Although I was sad to lose a friend, I'm excited that the carving is on display and for sale. It's named Toso Wood Gallery, and it is located here in Vancouver. If you're ever in town, please stop by. It is owned and operated by some very kind people. If you are interested in purchasing the carving, but don't live near the gallery, please reach out through my website, link down below. And thanks for watching. Also, don't worry, I'll be back at the cabin this spring.